Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Boy, are we going to have some fun today. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone. I am so glad that you are choosing to spend a part of your day with me because it is going to be so delightful today. And here's what I'm talking about. We are going to make a deliciously gorgeous candy bouquet for him. It's not going to be an over the top bouquet. It's going to be a very simple one. We're going to make it using rosettes and candy. So whatever his favorite sweet treat, go ahead and grab it. Then grab your beautiful papers because it is not going to take much to make this project. I absolutely love how this turned out and I'll give you a closer look once we get ready to go over what's going to be needed to make it. So do y'all know what time it is? It's time to make it. All right y'all so I raised my camera so that I could give you as good of a look at this as I can. It is really a cutie, and I think that anyone who receives this will really like it. So basically all I did was three rosettes, picked out some favorite candy, created a little box, and I filled it. So this is really a very simplified candy bouquet that I know that you guys can make, and I know you'll have fun making it. So here's what we're going to need. This will be a chipboard project, and I'm using a medium weight, and I have four pieces that measure two and five eighths by five. I have one piece that measures three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I have the decorative paper for my rosettes. I have one piece that is two by 12, one piece that is three by 12, and one piece that is four by 12. Then I'm using Kit Kat as my candy and I have a little Kit Kat miniatures. And then we're going to be using some 18 gauge floral wire and I have one piece that measures 10 inches, I have five pieces that measure nine inches, and I have four pieces that measure eight inches. And I'll be using seven of the Kit Kats. Then I have some buttons just as decorative accents on the back of the rosettes. I have three buttons. And then I have these little squares. They're basically three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And I'll have six of these and these will help to hold the rosettes together. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make our rosette. Now on all of my pieces, I am going to score them every one half of an inch. So I've already scored the four by 12 and the three by 12, and I'm going to go ahead and score the one by 12 with you guys. So I am going to score at half an inch at one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and so forth, every half an inch. And we'll do this all the way across. And then once you've done those scores, on all of these, we are going to do this process next. We're going to take each of our pieces and cut them in half on the two inch side, the three inch side, and the four inch side. So I am going to cut this two by 12 into two strips of one by 12. Then I'm going to take my four by 12, cut it into two strips of two by 12. And then I'll take that three by 12 and cut it into two strips of one and a half by 12. And these are our rosette pieces. So I'm going to make one rosette with you guys on camera, then I'll make the other two off camera. So I'm just going to take this and accordion fold on those half inch marks. And then I'll squeeze just to get it nice and compact. So you can see that I have this piece. I want this to be the front of my rosette. So when I started folding, I fold it this side with the end going up. So now I want to take the match to this and I'm going to start 
with the end being folded down. And I am just accordion folding all the way across and then I'm going to squeeze it real nice and tight just to get everything nice and creased. And so now I can take the piece that goes up and the piece that goes down and join those two and I will have my print on the correct side. So I am going to take my reptile glue and just put this together by joining those two. And then I'll do the same thing on this end. So we just want to create a little circle. So then I'll join these two, get them nice and stuck. And now I have my circle. And one of the things that I like to do with my rosettes is I like to just take them and pinch them all the way around. And then I'll make sure that I get this side too because what that's doing is it's helping to condense it and get it ready to be folded in. So I am going to need to grab two of my squares. I am going to be using my hot glue gun and I do have my corded hot glue gun because my other one, my cordless one is at home. So now that I have this like this, I'll just take it and smush it down. So just take it and smush it down. Now I can squeeze it together. I am going to take some of that hot glue, place that glue right there, take one of my little squares, put that square down, and I'm just going to look at this to make sure I have a nice little shape. And once that's dry enough, I'll flip it over. I'm going to add just a little more hot glue to the back. Take that second square and put it on the back. And now I have my little rosette and I think it's so cute. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other two off camera and then I'll be back. All right, y'all, so I have all of my rosettes made and aren't they just gorgeous? I love how masculine these are. So now I'm going to go ahead and place my 18 gauge floral wire on the back. And all I'm going to do is add just a little bit of hot glue, take this wire, and on the larger rosette, I use the nine inch wire. I am going to add just a little bit of hot glue to the back of that button. We're going to place that button right there, just so we have a nice little finish back to this. Now I'll take the next one, and on my medium size rosette, we're going to go with the eight inch stem, and then I'll go ahead and add some glue to that button, and we'll place that button right here. And then we'll do the same thing to this one. So for this one, for the smaller one, we are going to use our smallest stem. And then I'll take my button. I've added some glue to the back of that button. And I'm just going to place that on right there. So I think I gave you guys the wrong measurements on these stems. So here's what I used. On the larger rosette, I used the 10 inch stem. On the medium rosette, I use the nine inch, and on the smaller rosette, I use the eight inch. And all of these are 18 gauge floral wire. So now I'm just going to take these and set them to the side, and we'll decorate the front in just a moment, but I am going to go ahead and do the candy so that I can turn off my hot glue gun. So here's the easiest way to do the candy. I have seven pieces, and I'm going to have three pieces that I'll be using the eight inch on and then four pieces that I'll be using the nine inch stems on. So all I'm doing is taking my candy, I'm opening the back just like this. I'm going to drop in a little bit of hot glue. Then I'll take my wire, put it in and fold over. And that's going to keep it stuck. 
So I have already done all of these. So we now have these and we have the rosettes. We're going to go ahead and make our box and that way we'll be ready to put everything together after we have decorated those rosettes. So here's how we're going to make the box. I have a piece of 12 by 12 inch decorative cardstock and I'm using that beautiful collateral rust paper. I think that I might not have mentioned that when I was going over the supplies, but you will need a 12 by 12 inch piece. And it's going to be very easy on this scoring because on one 12 inch side, we are going to score every two and three quarters of an inch. So we'll score at two and three quarters, five and a half, eight and a quarter, and 11. Then we're going to rotate it to the other 12 inch side and we're going to score at two and a quarter. and at seven and a half. So now we'll just fold and burnish all of our scores. And either side of this paper would have been gorgeous. So now I'll bring in my finger blade and on this narrow flap right here, you're going to have two triangles in both corners and we're going to remove those all together. So we'll have one very long triangle and then we'll have a shorter triangle, but we'll remove them both. and this becomes our glue flap. Then we're going to go along this part here, which is the narrow part at the bottom, and we're just going to angle on both sides of all of the score marks. This will be the bottom of our box. And then here at the top, I'm going to rotate it and I am going to go to wherever there's a score mark and release these tabs completely. Now, if you feel more comfortable with putting this back in your cutter and cutting out, um, do that if it's going to help you. Otherwise, just go up to that score mark. Let me define that score mark and drag straight down. And we're just going to free all of these tabs and sometimes it can be a little bit hard to see that score, but I think I've got it. So we're just going to free up all of our tabs, just like this. And now we're going to take our pieces that measure two and five eighths by five, and we're going to place them inside of the score marks. We don't want them hitting the score marks. We're just going to place them inside because this is going to give us a very sturdy box. So all I'm doing is taking my pieces and placing them inside of the score. And I might need to bring it up just to make sure that I'm not over that score mark. And then I'll put this last one down. And then we should be able to fold this up because this is how we'll put it together. So before we do that, I am going to take my glue and I am going to place glue on all of these flaps. And then we're just going to fold these over because what this does is it gives us a nice finish to our box. We don't have to worry about going all the way to the bottom. And now we have this nice little box. We're actually going to close it by taking our flap and putting it on the outside. Take my glue, 
place it on my glue flap. And I'll take this piece and I'm just going to match to make sure I have everything nice and even. Get that nice and tight so that box is squared. And now you can see we have a beautiful little box. I'm going to turn this over, fold the sides in. This is the back piece because this is where that back flap is. So I am going to take my glue, place my glue on the back flap, and then I'll place my glue on this piece. And now we have a box. And then I'm going to bring in that three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch chipboard. And I am not going to add any paper to that chipboard because I am going for that industrial grunge look. So I am going to add my glue to the bottom of this. I'll take this piece. We're going to get it placed down on that chipboard. And I'm just going to make sure I have everything nice and even in my placement. And I'll hold it up like this so that you can see that base, which is exactly what I want it. So now I have this piece of floral foam that I'm just going to drop in. It's a nice tight fit, so I don't need to add the glue to the bottom like I normally would. So now I'm just going to decorate my rosettes using some of the stickers from the Hey Mister collection. So I need to add a little bit of glue to the back of this one because some of my stickers are just a little bit old. And this one says hello and I thought it was pretty cute. And then I'm going to take this one and I have this little figurehead that I am just going to take and put him right there using my reptile glue. So now y'all, we are ready to do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one that says dad, which is my tallest one, and I'm going to put it in in the middle. So I'm just putting it down inside of that styrofoam and I'm actually trying to do this sideways. So please bear with me. So I'll take my second one and place it in. Then I'll take the third one, which is the smallest one, and we'll place it in on the other side. And I'm just trying to get these in, and then because it is the wire, I can go back and fix it. So I'm going to stand this up, and the way that it's moving right now, it will lessen once I put in um, my shredded paper. So now I have it like this. I am just going to take my candies. I want to get the three shorter ones for in the front and the four taller ones for in the back. So I am going to take my candies and we're just going to tuck them in and you can tuck yours in wherever you want them to be but yours does not have to be like this if you choose to make this project. However you decide to put your candy in is right. So we're just taking our candy and filling it in wherever you want your candy to be. Then I'll do the same thing at the back. I am just going to take my wires and drive them down into the styrofoam and I'm just filling this with my candy. And then we'll come back and we're going to add our shredded paper. All right guys, so once you have all of your candy pieces and your rosettes in, this is how it's going to look. Now we're going to take that shredded paper and just start filling it in. So I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of shredded paper and I'm going to take that shredded paper and just tuck it down in. And that really helps to start making this little project take that shape of cuteness. So you can use as much or as little shredded paper as you want. I like to use a lot because I like that full look that it gives. 
and you can add just as much candy as you want. If you want a fuller basket with more candy, you know, add some more of that favorite candy. So I am just adding my shredded paper. So now I'm going to clean up my shredded paper mess before we move on with the rest of the project. And now you're able to see that when we add that shredded paper, we really do finish this off very nicely. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I am going to make myself a little twine bow. So I have about two and a half feet of twine and I'm going to wrap it around my four fingers, not tight, but I'm just going to wrap it until I get a tail just like this. Then I'm going to remove it and pinch it in the center. Then I'll take that tail, wrap it around, and then bring it through. Don't pull it tight or you'll make it come unraveled. And you're just going to end up with a rustic little twine bow. So at this point, I'm just going to take some of my hot glue place glue on the back and then I'll take that and I'm going to put it right there. So I got a little bit of glue on my hands but luckily I'm not using a high temp glue gun so I didn't really get burned if I had been using my cordless glue gun. I probably would have felt that. So now we have our little bow on. You can put something in the center of the bow if you want. You can even come back and open up your loop some, which is what I like to do. And now we have our second completed candy bouquet. I have it laying on its side so that you guys can get a good look at how everything is put together in here. Then I'll stand it up and you can see just how cute that is. So I'm going to bring that first one in so you can see both of these side by side. So super easy to do guys. And I know that you'll have a lot of fun with this. If you don't have the floral wire, but you have some barbecue skewers or you have some paper straws or straws in general, that will work for this project as well. So guys, I hope that you have liked this fun little project for him. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.